Welcome to the second episode of our webinar series 2020. Lights, Camera, Action, Research. Hello everyone! At this point, I would like to congratulate all of you for successfully finishing episode 1. I know that you now have clear understanding of what action research is and how it differs from other types of researches. With that, let's forget about fundamental researches. Let's forget about thesis or dissertation writing. Let's now dwell on things that we've been doing, the thing that you know now as investigation to improve your own practice. And of course, I am talking about action research. Let me bring you to the next level towards understanding about action research. This episode shall focus on the action research process. At the end of this episode, you shall be able to understand the action research process and demonstrate understanding on how to use action research to improve your own practice. Different authors present the action research process in different ways. However, the majority of them agree that action research is an undertaking that is primarily conducted to improve one's own practice. They further agreed that action research may also be called a cycle of action or cycle of inquiry, since it typically follows a predefined process that is repeated over time. The process of action research begins with a concern or interest from one's own professional context. This concern leads to gathering information and knowledge about the concern. Based on existing and new information and knowledge, a researchable plan is devised and implemented within one's own professional context. Data on the implemented plan are then collected and analyzed. The findings of the action research are shared with colleagues, administrators, and other stakeholders. In an ongoing process, action researchers continue to observe, reflect, and plan according to Nugent et al. in 2012. On the other hand, Real and Rowell in 2016 stated that subjects of action research is the action that is taken, the resulting change, and the transformation thinking acting and feeling by the person enacting the change. While the design of action research may originate with an individual, the process of change is always social. Over time, the action researcher often extends the arena of change to a widening group of stakeholders. The goal is deeper understanding of the factors of change which result in positive personal, professional, and organizational change. This form of research then is an iterative, cyclical process of reflecting and practice, taking action, reflecting, and taking further action. Therefore, the research takes shape while it is being performed. Greater understanding from each cycle points to the way to improve practice. However, after reading written articles, books, and watching quality materials about action research, and as a product of experience along action research, I would like to share with you my own model of the action research process. This model is called the 5D action research model. This is simplified to guide you in every step of an action research process. Illustrated here is the cyclical and spiral nature of action research as an approach to solving a classroom issue or problem. However, it does not always follow that one problem needs to undergo the three cycles as illustrated. This diagram only shows that action research does not end in one attempt to effect change in the phenomenon identified. This greatly depends on the objective of the study and the progress of the action research process. When a desired change or result is attained, that's the time that the cycle stops. Then the practitioner may look for another problem to be addressed in another set of cyclical steps. 
Let me now discuss in detail the five basic steps in action research composing the 5D model. First, D. Detect. Identify the problem. Inside the classroom, you are confronted with overwhelming issues and concerns starting from curriculum implementation, assessment, students' learning, and the like. It is therefore important that you will identify issues of concerns that need immediate action. Most errors of action researchers start from being too ambitious in addressing classroom problems. Effective action research it starts with a clear and focused action research problem. However, not all researchable problems can be solved through action research. Action research addresses a practical problem. Your perceived problem can be too vague that you become so confused on how to solve it. To understand better your problem, you may gather information through literature review or collaborate with co-practitioners who have experienced similar problems until you narrow down your concern into one specific practical problem. It is the smaller and actionable part of the bigger research problem. Always remember that you can never solve all your problems in the classroom in just one action research. Focus and specificity are elements that make action research an effective way to solve immediate problems in the classroom. Second D, design or create a plan. Once a practical, actionable problem is identified, you choose an intervention or strategy that will help you address the problem. If it is about modifying your teaching strategy, review some literature that would help you finalize your contextualized plan. Remember that your action research is to be conducted as an answer to a pressing issue inside your own classroom. You may adapt a strategy proven effective by the previous researchers, but you need to contextualize your action to your own classroom setting. Create a logical sequence of activities to undergo in your entire research process. It would help you in actual implementation if you include in your plan anticipation of possible delays and obstacles. Third, D. Do or act to implement the plan. In this phase, you are to implement the plan, be it an application of modified strategy, use of new learning materials, change in classroom management techniques, or any intervention or solution that you have incorporated in your plan. Fourth D, determine, observe, collect, and analyze. You are now to observe the effect of your intervention to your teaching. Using the appropriate data gathering tool, you will record the indicators of performance, behavior, and other observable measures. In your plan, you have outlined the tools that you'll be using in your own action research. It is important that as a researcher, you are familiar with these tools to facilitate getting of accurate and necessary data related to the classroom phenomenon you are studying. And the fifth D, disclose, reflect, and share. The findings of the action research are shared with colleagues, administrators, and other stakeholders. It is where we see the effect of the action research to address the identified problem. But it does not always follow that every research ends with what we expect to happen. Due to vulnerability of the action research process to uncontrollable factors and researchers' bias, we need to reflect on the result as well as on what we did along the process. Sharing the result to colleagues would be an avenue for deliberation and feedback mechanism. After this, a refined research problem is identified and a new plan is created and a better solution is implemented and a new cycle begins. This is the entire action research process that makes it different from other types of researches. As discussed earlier, action research is less formal and action-oriented. 
it is not rigid to follow steps objectively. Along the process, the researcher may do some revision on the plan, gather more data, analyze, reflect, share, and so on. What guides the progress is the quest to find answers to the post problem. All right, that ends our second episode of this webinar series 2020. Thank you for watching and see you on our next episode.